Okay, a lot of you had trouble on this writing skeleton equations quiz. This is quiz B. If you had quiz A, it has the same questions for the most part. They're just switched around a little bit, so you just have to figure out which ones that you have. For this first question, to write the skeleton equation, we have to first of all write the symbol for lead, PB. The 2 means that the lead has a plus 2 charge. Acetate is found in the back of your periodic table. It is C2H3O2. I have to check the charges on that. This lead had a plus 2, and acetate has a minus 1, and they don't cancel, so I have to crisscross and put this one in parentheses and the 2 on the outside here. I get rid of my charges up here because I don't like them up there, and that's a lead 2 acetate. Reacts with is plus. Calcium is just Ca. I know calcium has a plus 2 charge, but when it's by itself, you don't need it. To form, we put an arrow. Calcium acetate, which is calcium, and then there's the acetate ion again, C2H3O2. I check the charges. Calcium has a plus 2 charge. Acetate has a minus 1. So I have to crisscross. The 2 comes down over on the other side. I get rid of my charges up here. That's the only time I need parentheses when I have to crisscross onto a polyatomic ion. And lead plus PB. All by itself. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to put a subscript. We don't have to check the charges. That's the skeleton equation for that number one. Okay, for number two right here, we have nitric acid. That's one of the formulas we were supposed to memorize. It is HNO3. Reacts with magnesium hydroxide. Here's magnesium. Hydroxide's on the back of your periodic table. It's OH. The charge on that is a minus one. Magnesium's in group two. It's a plus two. They don't cancel out, so we have to crisscross, bring that 2 down on the outside, and let's get rid of these charges right here. To form is an arrow, magnesium nitrate, Mg nitrate, again on the back of your periodic table, it ends in 8, so we have to look back there. Nitrate has a minus 1 charge, magnesium still has a plus 2 charge, they don't cancel, so I need to bring the 2 on the outside over here. Get rid of those charges. And then water, which is just H2O. There's the skeleton equation for number two. For number three, we have silver carbonate. Silver is AG, and carbonate is on the back of your periodic table. It is CO3. That has a minus two charge. Silver has a plus one, even though it's in the transition metals. It is kind of a different one here. So we have to crisscross. We bring the two from carbonate down over here and get rid of my charges. There's silver carbonate. Reacts with, there's my plus, copper. It's just plain old copper. You don't have to have anything on it. You don't have to check the charges to form copper 2 carbonate. Here's my copper. Carbonate is still CO3. That has a minus 2 charge. Copper, in this case, because of that 2 right there, tells you that it is a plus 2 charge, not two coppers on there. And so I don't need that. Those cancel each other out. And don't need to crisscross. No parentheses needed either. And silver, which is AG. And for number four, we have potassium oxide. Potassium is K. Oxide is O, just from the front of the periodic table. I have to check the charges. K has a plus one. O has a minus two because of their location on the periodic table. They do not cancel, so we have to crisscross. The 2 comes down here on the K, and we get rid of these charges because we don't want them there anymore. Potassium oxide reacts with, there's the reacts with, aluminum chloride. There's aluminum, here's chloride. Check the charges again. Chloride in group 17 has a minus 1. Aluminum in group 13 in the metals has a plus 3. Those do not cancel, so we bring the three down on the chlorine. Make sure you're crisscrossing and not just dropping straight down. Get rid of these charges. We never take a one down, and we never take the sign down either. To produce, whoopsie, not, that's not to produce. To produce is an arrow. Aluminum oxide, A, L, and O. Again, we have to check the charges. Aluminum's a plus three. Oxide is a minus 2. They don't cancel, so we crisscross. The 2 from the oxide comes down here. The 3 goes over here. We don't take the signs with us. Al2O3. And potassium chloride. Here's potassium. Chloride is Cl. Check the charges again. Chlorine has, still has a minus 1. Potassium has a plus 1. They cancel out. 
so we don't have to crisscross at all. And there is your skeleton equation for number four. Number five says, why can't CO2 not be formed from calcium chloride and aluminum phosphide when they react? Well, you didn't have to go through all this work, but here's calcium chloride, CaCl2. Here's aluminum phosphide. There is no way we can get CO2 out of this because, first of all, there's no carbon on this side at all. No carbons over here, and there are no oxygens over here. You have to have the same types of elements on the reactant side as you do on the product side, so there's no way we could produce CO2. And for number six, uh, the symbols that go after these, these were on our writing equations YouTube video. For letter A right there for a liquid, it's going to be L. For a gas, it's going to be G. Uh, the other quiz, you had a solid, that's going to be S. And to show it's dissolved in water is AQ, that it's in an aqueous solution. Hope you, these help you out.